All the confetti has been scooped up from the national championship victory for the Georgia Bulldogs in SoFi Stadium. And it's never fun, but we gotta do it on a national championship season. Take your fingers, maybe you even lick the fingers a little bit to get a good grip, turn the page, on to the next one. And the next season, the 2023 season for Georgia, will have to answer the question, what does life look like after Stetson Bennett? After he moves on and does what you would hope are great things in the NFL, have a stocks quarterback room. That's the good news. Gunnar Stockton, Carson Beck, Brock Vandergriff, you have an embarrassment of riches. But the odds for the Heisman Trophy came out at different outlets, and it's worth mentioning. And I don't want to get too much into the Heisman odds as much as I think it tells us about the Georgia quarterback race, but FanDuel has Brock Vandergriff at plus 3,000. They have Carson Beck at plus 4,000. Okay, so they're giving Brock Vandergriff a little bit better odds, is FanDuel. Caesar Sportsbook, however, has Carson Beck at plus 2,000. Brock Vandergriff at plus 2,500. Again, I'm not looking at this from a Heisman Trophy race perspective. I think whoever plays quarterback for Georgia, if Georgia does what Georgia's capable of doing, has a chance to take home that little bronze statue. But it's interesting because neither of these outlets are consistent on who they think it sounds like is going to be the starter for Georgia. So let's just take inventory of what could be the setup for them once that's a minute leaves. And Gunnar Stockton, I believe, will factor into this race. I want to focus for this segment on Brock Vandergriff and Carson Beck because of what those odds are telling us. So here's the reality. Whoever steps in as QB1 in Athens next will be more talented than Stetson Bennett. Hear what I didn't say. I did not say they will be a better quarterback. But in terms of what God gave you, what you have no ability to control, these guys will have that a little bit more than Stetson Bennett. Stetson Bennett was a walk-on. We know his story. Went to JUCO, came back to Georgia, got a scholarship. They said, you're not going to play here. He said, I don't care. At the end of the day, has two natties. So far be it from me to say that Stetson Bennett isn't as good a quarterback as these guys. He very much clearly is the better quarterback. Otherwise, one of these guys would be starting. But with pure ability, with stuff you can't coach, these guys have got that in spades. Carson Beck, consensus four-star player, played the national title game when it got ugly. When they're going 65-7 to seven is the score. Carson Beck's in there, still dealing, handing it off, running the offense. He looked pretty composed. 6'5", 226. He's more of the pro-style mold. Like when I watch Carson Beck on tape, good frame, throws the ball around the field with relative ease, great accuracy, lit it up a couple G days. Uh, he's someone you're excited about. The sample size on both these guys is pretty small, but from what we can tell, that's what you're getting with Carson Beck. With Brock Vandergriff, six foot three, 205, good passer, a little bit more of a dual threat than Carson Beck is. The comp for him from Charles Power, director of scouting and rankings for on three, is Jarrett Stidham. So they like his mobility, they like what he can do resetting the platform and, and using his legs to get out of trouble. Bottom line, both really good options. Brock Vandergriff was a consensus five-star. Carson Beck, consensus four-star. A lot of talent, a lot of ability. So at the end of the day, what I'm trying to tell you is what you have at the quarterback position for Georgia is going to be, from a talent perspective, enough to go for a third national title. Now, will they? Depends on execution, experience, and a million other variables that make up why we love college football so much. But from just an ability standpoint, you will have what you need. Whether you go with Carson Beck or with Brock Vandergriff, they will have it under the hood. If you're not yet subscribed, would love to have you at the party. We do content every single day about this beautiful game that you and I both love. Thank you to all the Georgia faithful that have joined the party this season. If you haven't yet, no time like the present. Also, follow me on Twitter and on Instagram. Stay with every single thing that we're doing on here, all right? So what does Georgia need from one of these guys in 2023? What's the setup going to look like? Because system is just about as important as who you have in that system. And there's a little bit of a thought that, well, maybe they will take a little bit off their plate. Maybe they won't throw the football as much. Maybe it will be a little more ground and pound. Heck, you got the center coming back. You're going to have the physical edge in just about every game you play. They're going to run the football more? Maybe. I don't think the approach changes for Georgia, though. I don't think we're going to see them turn one of these guys into a game manager. 
Now, some of that could be an experience factor that, that we get a better feel for as the season wears on and as we get into you know fall camp, but they averaged 32 attempts per a game last year, did Georgia, and I don't think they're going to change the approach. The reason why I believe that is you went out on your own accord as a Georgia program, again, program, not program, because Georgia's back-to-back -back natty champs, all right? They went out and got Ra Ra Thomas and Dominique Lovett, two big-time receivers in the transfer portal. I don't think you go out and upgrade at the receiver position if you have any sort of hesitancy about what you're going to do on that front. Does that make sense? Like, Georgia doesn't even really go in the portal that much to begin with, and you made a point to go and get two ballers on the outside, but you're not going to throw the football as much? That doesn't make sense to me. Also, Brock Bowers exists. He needs to see a healthy dose of the football. I understand you can turn around and hand it to him, but I think they're still going to be pretty aggressive with how they throw the football with Todd Munkin running the show. Again, with either of these guys, that's what I foresee happening. I'm sure there, there's going to be things about it that look different, but the game plan, I think, will be relatively consistent. All right? So, as we get into spring, as we get into the rumors and the quarterback battle, and again, Gunnar Stockton will factor into this, but whoever ends up being Georgia's starting quarterback will be the guy that moves the offense the best. You're saying no, duh. Yes, of course he's going to move the offense the best. That's what we want playing quarterback. Okay, I hear you, but what sometimes gets factored into this too much is combine syndrome. And you know what I'm talking about. We fall in love with the player who can sling it around when we're in T-shirts and shorts and seven-on-seven, seven and he can throw the ball a quarter mile, and he's got all these physical traits and all these tools. That's great. I'm here for it. You need that as a quarterback. But you know who didn't have that in spades? And when you two national title sets in Bennett ended up being the starter over JT Daniels, who was the five-star, who had all the tools, who had all the acumen. Went with the guy who moved the offense, who gives you the best chance to score points. So with that being said, keep an eye on that as the G day rolls around here and hopefully it gets here soon. I'm sure we'll have a lot to talk about until we get to that point. But I want to see football. You want to see football. All right. So when that time comes, we'll talk about G day. We'll talk about who moved the offense well. And I'm excited to watch this race. Like I said, zero bad options in that quarterback room, whether it's Carson Beck, Brock Vandergriff, Gunnar Stockton, you got some guys that can help you. Got some guys that can do more than help you. Can get you back to the national title game. That's what I believe for Georgia in 2023. But regardless, like I said, we will keep an eye on it. Every single thing that you know and love about this beautiful game, it happens right here every single day. So we appreciate you rocking with us. Nick Brake, lifting heavy. This is the Hard Count. This is y'all show. Again, subscribe if you haven't already. Follow me on Instagram and on Twitter if you haven't already, at Judy Pakel. We love y'all. We appreciate y'all. We're going to keep the party rolling. We will see y'all next time. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.